how does a zookeeper work in the zoo? They know each of the animals in their care. They understand what makes them tick. They put them in the best possible surroundings and they know to feed them the right kind of food. To be an effective zookeeper, you need to understand each style. You need to understand your own style first and those of your customers and prospective clients. As you recognize what makes each person special, your sales will grow. One of your most valuable skills, therefore, as a zookeeper, is your ability to understand your animals. They are constantly sending you signals that give you a clear indication of their primary behavioral patterns. When you can interpret these correctly, you'll know how to work with them most effectively. So what is there to know? Human animals have many subtle ways of communicating. You can pick up their signals if all your senses are tuned in. You'll know when to speed up or slow down, when to focus on the details, or when to work on building your relationship with the other person. The skillful zookeeper recognizes that each of these four types will respond to different pitch approaches. Once you realize this, you can work out how best to communicate with a wide variety of customers and potential clients. The good zookeeper is observant, always looking for clues that will help to explain why people behave the way they do. It's important to tune into body language as well as what's said and not said. As you develop your understanding of why people behave the way they do, your ability to communicate with them will increase and they will feel much more comfortable interacting with you. The zookeeper also knows how important it is to understand the different animals he's pitching to and the importance of adapting his style to secure the steel. He knows when his customers and potential buyers are under pressure that they will revert to type. And not just type, but the bad day behaviours of our type. He sees the lions being much more direct and forceful. He sees the monkey craving more social interaction, the dolphin being more organised than normal, and our elephants being much more detail orientated in order to get things done. But rather than Thinking about these behaviours in a negative light, the zookeeper realises the importance of communication and managing people effectively. He knows that each animal profile needs different levels of support to take a decision to buy. He knows that the lions are typical negotiators, tough and uncompromising. They don't suffer fools gladly and they are determined to be in control and in charge. He knows that they want to be in control and can appear to be aggressive if you don't give them what they want. They often seem unfriendly at first and they will impose time deadlines and meetings. The lion doesn't want to be your friend. So the typical salesperson will irritate the lion who will often bully the salesperson into submission. The lion drives a hard bargain and wants to win. So how does he pitch to the lion? He's assertive. He's prepared to stand up for himself. He plans for the meeting and asks lots of questions. He uses facts and logic and when necessary will agree with facts rather than opinion. He keeps it business-like. He keeps it efficient and to the point. And he learns how to say no. The zookeeper knows on the other hand, that our monkeys are very different. They're impulsive buyers with low boredom threshold and a short attention span. They love to buy concepts and they'll make quick, if not always good decisions, but they will be quick decisions. They don't want a lot of detail and they will not read a detailed proposal. They're not good listeners and they like a good brainstorming session. They're confident and flamboyant but as I said, not great when it comes to the detail. In negotiations, they will start off strong, but they'll get bored and they'll often make concessions just to get the thing over with. Monkeys tend to buy on the day, so get some sort of commitment from them while you can. Once you've gone, they will be moving on to their next project and they'll have forgotten all about you. 
So the effective zookeeper knows that his approach when pitching should be firstly to look for the flip chart in the office. Let them do the work by asking lots of open-ended questions. The discussion should be about people as well as facts. Keep summarizing so that you can work out the specifics and get to some point of agreement. Close them down today if you can and get that commitment. The approach with the dolphins is very different because the seal style of the dolphin, dolphins, as we know, are very friendly. They're great in social situations and they prefer friendly relationships to conflict. Many salespeople are very amiable in their nature and dolphin buyers find it difficult to say no. So they will agree to an appointment and to a meeting with you, but you've got a way up. Are they actually just wasting your time? They tell you what the competition are up to, but you've also got to be mindful. What are they telling the competition about you? You really do need to look after your dolphin customers. They are loyal and they're unlikely to move to a competitor because that involves a certain degree of conflict and they hate giving bad news. They are nice people to be around and in negotiations, they will tend to give everything. So the zookeeper knows that when pitching to a dolphin, their approach needs to be friendly. They need to work together. They need to jointly seek common ground. They need to find out about their personal interests and their family. They need to focus the discussion on how. And they need to demonstrate low risk solutions. The zookeeper recognizes, on the other hand, that the elephant, their approach is a little bit different because the elephant tends to distrust salespeople because a salesperson in their eyes lacks precision. The elephants like to analyze and compare things. They take their time and they are wary of making quick decisions. They deal in facts and like things to be objective rather than subjective. They tend not to be confident in social situations and they hate small talk. They avoid risk taking and they like things to be put in writing and in detail. They find salespeople to be a little bit intimidating, especially if they feel under pressure. Their main tactic for getting rid of salespeople is to stop replying to their voicemails. The zookeeper will be asking the following questions to bring the pitch to a close. So do you think this will get the result you need? What's your time scale and what do you want to do next? For the monkeys, the questions will be very different. The zookeeper will be very enthusiastic in their approach. They will smile a lot and they will ask questions like, I reckon this will be great for, for you lot, don't you? How do you see this working for you? When can we team up? For the dolphin, again, the questions will be different. Do you feel this may make a difference and give you and your colleagues the benefits that you want? Is this something that your colleagues might find valuable? Do you have a sense of when your team could get together for this to happen? So for the elephant, the zookeeper's approach to the questions again is very different. Their approach will be much slower, much more serious, and they are prepared for long silences after the question has been asked. What are your thoughts? What other information do you need in order to make a positive decision about this? From a time perspective, is this something you think could happen within the present financial year? Finally, the zookeeper recognizes the importance of understanding cultural differences and adjusts his style across the cultures to increase his likelihood of success. He knows that culture contributes to behaviors and some behaviors are acceptable in one country and not in another. Before any sales pitch to a foreign market, he explores the cultural context and then looks to how he can adapt his selling techniques to match local expectations. In the Western world, we have rules-based culture 
So Westerners organize their business around contracts enforced by a legal system. That is the accepted norm, and it'll probably suit our elephants. In relationship-based cultures, for example, Asia, deals are based primarily on loyalty and obligation to a friend. So building a relationship is very important to them before you can do any business. Any cold calling activities are a formula for failure over here. Instead, learning more about the relationship aspect is crucial. You even may need a referral through a mutual contact to get into the business. So the dolphin and the monkey will probably do quite well here based on the relationship side. Other cultural differences include a different view of the value of time. So for example, in the Middle East and Africa, don't expect the meeting to start on time or even on the day agreed. That'll suit the monkeys because they probably forgot why they were there on the trip in the first place anyway. Don't underestimate the value of rituals or building personal rapport and establish trust and respect. They are important in Eastern countries. So you may find that you spend several meetings before you even get down to business. This is something that the elephants will enjoy studying up on before their trip. Gift giving is important in Asia, but understand the cultural significance of your, zip, your gift. For example, Google made the mistake of giving their Chinese employees the gift of a clock. In China, the gift of a clock means your time is up. Body language during a sales talk. A steady gaze may show openness and interest in one culture, but aggression in the other. So the lion needs to be aware. Knowing the cultural context helps the zookeeper when selling their products and services abroad. So what you need to do is invest some time in learning about the culture of your target groups in order to establish their needs, meet their expectations and pitch to their buying patterns. Once you know how to adapt, you can successfully sell in any country. And when it comes to culture, it's best to do your homework. When my associate Nigel and I wrote our book on communication, we made sure we practiced what we preached and we wrote it in all four languages. So for the monkey, we have a joke on the front page. If you go to the zoo, always take something to feed the animals. Even if the sign says, do not feed the animals, it wasn't the animals that put them signs up. And that's the wit and wisdom of Forrest Gump. We also included a selfie for our monkeys. For the lions, we know how busy you are and you don't have time to read books like this. So we didn't print many words in your pages, but they are important words for you. For the elephant, we've done a section right at the front just for you on how all this stuff came about and why we know it works. And you can get really excited elephants as it's got lots of tables at the back and they're all color coded. And of course, for our dolphins, it's printed on recycled paper. So even when we write to people, we do it in all four styles. When we communicate, it's in all four styles. When I send out an email to people, it's in all four styles. For the monkey, so long as there's an interesting title, they'll open it. I never see see a lion in the email. It is always sent directly to them. For the elephants, they will always have at least one attachment, if not many more. And for the dolphins, I always finish with kind regards. So what do you need to do today to be more effective. You've got to understand the different styles of your team and those you're pitching to, because understanding is the key to success. You've got to manage the animal in you and the other animals on your team. You've got to think in their language, not yours. And most importantly, you've got to recognize that people are difficult, who are difficult, are not necessarily wrong. And they simply appear difficult because they are different to us. And there is richness in diversity. To conclude, the key to a successful sales pitch is being able to make a connection. 
It doesn't matter if you're a lion, a monkey, a dolphin, or an elephant. To master selling to different behavioral styles, you need to take off your animal badge and replace it with a zookeeper's badge. And in doing so, you will transform your ability to win deals and grow your revenue. Thank you.